Welcome to Chem Technologies. In this video, we'll look at how to set up SharePoint environments mirrored between on-premises and the Azure Cloud, and show how to fail over to the Cloud. Our configuration consists of load balanced SharePoint servers and associated infrastructure including Active Directory, SQL and DFS servers. The on-premises environment is built on Hyper-V and the Virtual Load Master provides load balancing across the SharePoint servers. It could also serve as the endpoint for the IPsec tunnel. In the cloud, the SharePoint and SQL servers provide a warm standby in case of failover and Loadmaster Geo is configured on both Loadmasters for global server load balancing. In this example, the on-premises virtual machines in Hyper-V include the gateway on-prem GW1, which is running RAS used for the IPsec tunnel to connect to Azure. But as mentioned previously, the Loadmaster VLM could be used in place of this. In the Azure portal, we can see the corresponding set of virtual machines running in Azure. We can also see the configuration of the Azure Virtual Network and IPsec Tunnel. Two web applications exist for this environment, a central administration site which is used to administer the SharePoint environment and the production site which is the site we need to protect in the event of a disaster. Here we see the Loadmaster configuration in Hyper-V. Note that the two real servers are shown as up. And here we see a screenshot of the very simple uh, SharePoint web application that we're using for this demo. Notice there are currently only two documents in the Important Documents library. Here we see the web application list for SharePoint in Azure. Notice there is just one at the moment. And here again in Azure this time we see the Loadmaster configuration and in this case the real servers are shown as down. We have not yet created the SharePoint web application and that's the reason. Now looking at the on-premises virtual load master, here's the GSLB configuration. Notice the Azure environment at 13.82.60.154 is down and this is because we don't yet have the web application created. The Azure GSLB configuration in this slide here uh, shows a mirror of the on-premises and this allows both to work in parallel in order to give the sites the resilience that we need. GSLB requires DNS configuration. We've created a node sp.kempdemo.com in external DNS and have added name servers to this. DNS1.kempdemo.com points to the on-premises VLM and dns2.kempdemo.com points to the Azure VLM. Now we move on to look at DFS management. Both the on-premises and Azure FS1 are members of the colon BU replicated folder. And here we see a listing of the on-premises SQL Server databases. Prod content or the production content database is the one that we need to protect. On the Azure side, notice that we don't currently have a database called prod content. So to create that database in the Azure side, First we take a full backup of the database and this will be used to create the database over on the Azure SQL Server side. Next step is to backup this database to the DFS share. And here 
we see the settings for doing that particular backup. And as soon as that backup has completed successfully, we can move on to the next step. We confirm now that the backup can be accessed from the Azure SQL1 server. And the next step is to enable log shipping. So we can select enable log shipping and select the backup settings to begin that process. We enter the DFS share to be used as the backup folder. And now we can change any schedule settings based on our requirements. In this case, we've selected the frequency of the transaction log backup to happen every five minutes. Now we add a secondary database. And we connect to our Azure SQL1 server. We select the second option so that we can use the full backup that we took earlier to create the database in Azure. On the Copy Files tab, we use the DFS share as the destination folder. On the Restore Transaction log, we select Schedule to set the restore interval. This will limit the amount of transaction logs that we need to replay into the database during the restore. And here we see the settings for that recurring restore activity. Now we can click on OK to start the log shipping. And here we see confirmation of a successful outcome. Looking now on Azure SQL 1, we can see that the production content database has been created and is in the restoring state. And you can see the transaction log backups getting created in the DFS share as well. In our case, we've set this to happen every five minutes. Next, to set up a failover test, we add a new document that is not in the full backup that we just made. And here you see us adding a new document into the important document library. And since our backup is set for five minute interval, we must wait at least five minutes until the transaction logs are shipped to Azure. Now it's time to test the failover. The steps described in this section are carried out manually for this particular example, but could be scripted to automate the process. In the event of an issue or outage in the SharePoint environment, there are a few tasks that need to be done, assuming that you have access to the on-premises environment. First, you would need to stop log shipping in the on-premises SQL server. Simply go into log shipping and uncheck the box. And here we see a successful outcome. Next, in the properties for the on-premises load master, select the virtual service for SharePoint. And under basic properties, uncheck the activate or deactivate service box. This should disable the service. And here we see that the virtual service is now shown as disabled. Looking now at the GSLB configuration, we see that both environments are down. So we have a temporary outage in effect at the moment. Now we can check the SQL server logs on the Azure side to check what transaction log restore took place last. And this will 
enable us to determine which additional transaction logs we need to play back into the database. Now we can go to the Azure SQL1 and select the production content database and we select the task to restore the transaction log. Now we select the source of the transaction log to complete the process. We can navigate to the DFS share and in this particular example we need to restore just the last transaction from the log. This is because our backup was every five minutes and our restores were scheduled every six minutes. We confirm the settings and click on OK to proceed. And here we see in Azure the production database has been successfully restored. Now log into the SharePoint server. Here's an example of a PowerShell commandlet to add a web application to SharePoint. This points to the production content database. Save this file to run later. And you would run this particular commandlet within the SharePoint 2013 management shell. Now we see two web applications listed in Azure SharePoint, in particular the SharePoint production environment that we failed over from the on-premises site. And now we can also view the site collection within Azure. Now looking at GSLB, we can see that the Azure side is now up, so our failover has been successful. And finally, now that the site has been restored, we can access the new document, this time from within the Azure environment. For documentation and additional information on Loadmaster and Azure, please visit kemptechnologies.com. Thank you very much for watching.